I did want to switch gears because there's another thing I picked on when you did your your opening uh, that I thought was very interesting is you talked about a friend that had a recent breakup and how when they found themselves maybe down from that situation, you talked about how to fo stop being so focused on me and instead focus on purpose. You said something along those lines and I wanted to understand what that strategy is and in what circumstances are they helpful for somebody? Off self on purpose, again, a great Tony Robbins, as a Tony Robbinsism, I call it. Uh, I'm a seven time firewalker, so I, I travel with Tony Got to uh, <laughs> a lot of different uh, events and, uh, you know, did a date with Destiny with my wife. That was our honeymoon. But my, my, she had her honeymoon and I had my honeymoon. My honeymoon was date with destiny, uh, six days at Tony Robbins. So, um, so that's, that's something that I've learned and picked up from him, which is off self on purpose. And anytime we feel stuck, typically it's because we're just focusing on ourselves. We're not focusing on anything outside of us. So if we could get beyond self, uh, or the inner game, we can call it, and then start focusing a little bit on service or other people's and, and getting a little bit of perspective from, from a purpose uh, or using another word might be contribution, like mm. giving to giving to a cause that you deem worthy of your your time or energy or your resources. Oftentimes, you will notice that um, uh, the feeling of like, wow, I don't feel so stuck anymore. And the reason why is because there's a chemical that we have called oxytocin. That oxytocin is the contribution chemical that starts getting activated in our body when we do random acts of kindness. So I've, um, in the Jewish faith, we call it a mitzvah. So my, my parents and my dad specifically have raised me to do mitzvahs, mitzvahs as a kid. And that's, I, I think, kind of like taking, my, taking its shape into adulthood as well. It's just doing these random acts of kindness, not because I want to post it on social media. It's just because I want to, uh, number one, selfishly, the positive self-interest, as Jim Rohn says, it's not selfish, it's a positive self-interest, is I want to feel good. And what makes me feel good is when my oxytocin goes up, when my cortisol level goes down right? Too many times try, people try to get dopamine hits, the dopamine, the caffeine or the alcohol or the social media clicks or the likes or loves like those are dopamine. Those are like, the, that's like um, lighter fluid. What I want to do is the oxytocin is more like coals. Like it just burns a little slower, a little deeper. Um, that, 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 you know, endorphins is another one of those chemicals. Like, you know, you could run or do a physical activity to kind of get those ener that energy. So off self on purpose is just a great, simple, like flip of the switch. And knowing what it's doing is just actually creating different, different chemical triggers in the body to create a different emotion or energy for us to be a little bit more present with whatever it is that we're focused on or want to be focused on. I love that. I, and I don't know if you can tell, but I'm just not as exposed to Tony Robbins material. So everything you're telling me, I'm like, wow, I never heard this before. <laughs> and I think that might be a consequence. Like, you know, I've been with Mind Valley for so long. So I've been exposed to a lot of different teachers from that front, but we never actually did uh, work with Tony uh, during my time there. So I haven't been exposed to his materials as well. So this is all coming fresh to me. And I'm hoping for anybody tuning in as well, they're going to be getting that kind of insight. Um, but I actually want to speak more about the fact that you speak a lot about being better than rich. And I found that was a very interesting twist since a lot of people who are might be listening to this show right now uh getting rich seems to be the first goal like it's like if only i could get to a certain amount of money that's when things start turning around that's when i'll get what i've been searching for and for you it seems like you're working with people that have kind of reached that goal but they faced a different problem when they've gotten there and i'd i'd love for you to kind of speak to that journey of going for the money but then realizing that maybe there's something else we need to be looking at that might be a bit more effective than just the money. Well, to honor time, I'll, I'll go with a short version. And then of course, if we want to poke around, we can go in, into any direction or a longer version or whatever, whatever will serve. So the short version is when I was in that hole, breakup ended, um, near bankrupt, living in a shitty apartment and like, uh, in Clearwater. Sorry, I just cursed. I don't know if I'm allowed to, but no, you're allowed um, to curse. So, so it is fine uh, on this podcast. Okay. We allow it. So, Sorry for those who are sensitive to that word, but poop will be mentioned. So, so, so living in a poopy apartment and, uh, you know, just, just, I, I really didn't want to get off the couch and then the, to make it even worse, my college roommate, my best friend at the time was killed in a fatal car crash. So I was just in like in a deep, deep, deep valley, like not wanting to get off the couch. And I was the owner of my direct sales company at the time. And I'm like, I just don't give a crap. So um, from that place is when I went to my first Tony Robbins event, I walked across fire and he said, my mess is my message. So from that place, 
I decided to speak at the school. So I spent that next 12 months pretty much speaking in the Pinellas County School District, about 30,000, 20 to 30,000 students, 300 hours crafting what that message is on goal setting and how to be present and what's important in life and finding your priorities to kids, middle school and high school kids, some colleges. I was doing a lot of keynote speaking and just most of it for free. I just was crafting the message, which ended up becoming my first book, which is Grab Tomorrow, Your Best Year Ever. And that was what you know, kind of sent things on this path towards regardless of life circumstances, I'm going to be a servant leader. I'm going to give, I'm going to help, I'm going to provide for other people and mine will come eventually. And it wasn't like immediate, like that was hard work. I was running my direct sales business. I was campaigning. I was doing book signings and speaking engagements. Like it was a lot. But eventually when I fell in love with my now wife, I said, there's no way I could sustain this lifestyle and then also be a husband and a present father. And that's when I hired a business coach to figure out what is what is what direction should I take? And one of the conversations we have is what do you want the one thing to be? And I said, I don't want I don't have a one thing, but here's what I do know. I want to create a business that ends up being a machine and that machine is to buy me time. And then I want to take the money from that business to don't go into passive investments. So that money buys me more money. And then that money gives me money. My business gives me time. And now I can go have location freedom. So that's the three X freedom that a lot of people think is rich. So that way I can pair this beautiful, like fulfillment, gratitude piece, a lot of this work that I've already done navigating through some of these challenging seasons, pair that with the three X freedom. Now I'm going to be better than rich. And he actually is who started the company. And then he was my coach. And now we're business partners on this brand because I was his first student and his first client. And I just did a really great job. He's like, cool. Let's, you know, we, I, I actually asked him, I said, I need to replace my wife's income in September, September 10th, 2021. I said, do you think we could partner up and teach other business owners how to do this? He's like, let's find out. So that was the birthplace of what we're doing now with Better Than Rich. Thank you so much for listening to the Selling With Love podcast. We have some previous episodes you can tune into right here. And if you prefer the short form content where you get to the point in under 10 minutes, we do have a ton of clips from our best episodes that are being shared on this channel as well. So pick which one supports you the most. And of course, thank you for liking, subscribing, and of course, selling with love.